Hey y'all, it's your friendly neighborhood panda here, back with the awesomest Aussie that ever was, DJ! Hi everyone! And we, <laughs> and we are on the final song of the Circe saga of Epic the Musical. There are other ways. Mm -hmm. Now, we got a little, we got the thing up here, it says warning, some spicy connotations. Okay, here's the thing. We chose this specific animatic. There was a tie between the suggestions of two of them. And this seems, we were told this is the less spicy of the two. We just don't want to get in trouble with YouTube. Yeah. So we've gone with Gigi's one because it is the less Gigi. of the spices, apparently. Apparently. But uh, I, we feel have a feeling we know where this is going. Because Circe has gotten to the point where she can't, you know, reason with him. She can't mm -hmm. outmagic him. Mm -hmm. don't, don't think she can be able to overpower him strength-wise. So she's going to use what she got. Yep. So. And I feel right, like, you ready for this? I feel like we got a kind of vibe from the very first song of this saga yeah. that Cersei's magic has a particular edge to it, where it's like, once you let your guard down, you're in trouble. Like she managed to yeah. use the, the nice food and the meal to spell the other ones. Mm -hmm. You can only imagine how much you let your guard down when you're, uh, you know, getting to know someone. So right. this could be very bad for Odysseus if he falls for this trap. Yes. We've noticed how this whole, this whole saga has been a, a lot about temptation and trickery and going, mm -hmm. you know, not the direct route. Yep. Definitely. Of dealing with somebody. And, you know, Odysseus is already a little compromised with, in his, in his grief. So mm -hmm. here we go. other ways of persuasion there are other modes of control there are other means of deceit there are other roads to the soul there are other actions of passion you have so much left to learn want to save your men from the fire show me that you're willing to burn about besides that little line right there um we're talking uh, in the last one each character has an instrument that mm -hmm. represents them mm -hmm. Cersei is the strings i like how they're using in this one they're using what sounds like either a cello or even a bigger like an upright bass that yeah. is very low very sensual mm -hmm. it's not that high sound anymore it's a real like yeah you're 100 mm -hmm. right um i also i'm so so relieved and so happy because you all know when you watched our last one that the animatic there ended with a preview of this song and we didn't know mm -hmm. that it was like we didn't know it had moved on to the next song basically because of how it was done uh but i'm very very satisfied to hear that the section we heard is literally just boom the start of this song it's not spoilers for midway point or towards the end or anything it's not right. a secret that her weapon in this is i'm a seduce you so the exactly. first the first lines are the part we heard which is great uh but yeah, yeah there we go. she's she, if, if odysseus falls for this okay if odysseus falls for this it is what we've been saying all along about him being the dumbest smart man in the world because she is literally saying from the second line she, the first line is about persuasion fine but there are other ways of control you yeah. could control and you're not going to pick up on that and now at the end mm -hmm. of this it's show me that you're willing to burn while she's got her hands they're on his shoulders but those hands are dangerously close and positioned in a way where it almost looks like they're about to wrap around his neck and that's mm -hmm. that is just great symbolism from gg in the animatic but at the oh, same yeah. time if you're falling for this you're not thinking with your head and yeah. Yeah, he's he's a fool if he does. But again, she's a temptress, she's a seductress, and he is just a man, as he said before. Exactly. A man who's been away from his wife for a, a man who's been away from his wife time. for a long time. So yeah. Yeah. Who's to say with the mistakes of men that they will be the last mistakes I ever made? There is so much power, so much power, but there's no puppet here. This is the price I'm we pay just now. On there is no line. I'm Never just enough, on so much power. Boy, 
Now I like the I like the way the music is going in the background. It sounds kind of like a a tango where they're going back and forth, mm-hmm. back and forth, not just lyrically with the lines. Yeah. But with the music itself. Yep. But at, at the same time, it's the music itself's going back and forth, but I feel like they're singing. It's very intentionally done in a way where they're singing over the top of each other. And it's mm-hmm. it's it's a literal struggle. And I don't know if most people like this, but when a song's like that, my brain mm-hmm. switches between which one to pay attention to. And so it becomes, the vocals themselves become a power struggle in my head. And so when I have that, it's just such a perfect symbol, symbol for this, what's happening in this moment of them having this power struggle. And yeah. they were both separately saying, there's no puppet here and vastly different intentions with that line. Mm -hmm. The fact that Cersei's first line was the first song was about being the puppeteer and she's saying, I'm not a puppet. You're not manipulating me into, you know, taking advantage of me, getting me into this situation of like the sexual stuff. I'm not Mm -hmm. the puppet. I'm the puppeteer. He's looking at this going, oh, we're making a choice and a decision. I'm not being manipulated into this. I'm not a puppet, but they mean vastly different things with it. One is a predator and one is a prey and the prey doesn't realize it at the moment. And again, I, I mentioned it before, but so much power, oh, so much power, there is no puppet Okay, stop we, it. That's all right. We keep doing it in this one. I'm so sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, the, the what I was what I was gonna, just going to finish on there was just the fact that um, yeah, we 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 I said it before in this automatic already, but the bringing in that motif again of I'm just a man. Jay mm-hmm. is so good at doing that throughout this whole musical of touching back on songs that he's already had previously and yes. make reminding you that that is a key. The reason that song's in there is because it's a key part of this character's psychology or a key part of what's going on in the story. Uh, and, although you know, although it's interesting that I think this is the first part, this is again, um, they've used it in different ways. Like, um, you know, the God saying you are just a man, you can't, take all this but then him making the excuse of i have to do this because i'm just a man yeah i can't help it i'm just a man yeah and that's the thing i feel like each time it's odysseus saying i'm just a man it is Mm -hmm. a thing of him justifying a moment of weakness that right he the original one is him doing what he does to the baby now I, i i it's been used since then but i can't think of the times it's been used a bunch of times in this situation here it's Mm-hmm. going to give himself over and let himself, you know, stray from his wife, number one, but be seduced by Cersei, number two. And it's yep. because I'm just a man. He, it's always justifying mm-hmm. his own internal weakness. And I yep. feel like, yeah, I feel like in this, if if Odysseus was going to have an anthem for his character, a, a song that is just, this sums up this character, it is, I'm just a man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now no, we're talking to Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Uh, I was going to ramble some more, but we don't need to ramble. I'm just a man. 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 i am and I feel like that's very telling for like <laughs> the fact that neither did Odysseus, but yep. Okay. There was a knife there. And then I suddenly saw it, it was like, Oh damn. And then he got up, he saved himself. So that's good. Yeah. yeah he says, I can't. Okay. Back at home, my wife awaits for me. She's my everything, my Penelope. And she's all my power, all my power. But it's been 12 long years. Oh! Twelve long years since I have seen my wife And now the god of tides is out to end my life So I beg you, Circe, grant us mercy And let us puppets leave <sighs> Poseidon, eh? There might be a way to evade him There might be a way to get Hold on, before she figures that out, first of all... What a swerve! Absolutely. 
<laughs> like we're going here now. I want to look, go back and look at his the way he was what he was talking about, where he's he's talking about you know help us figure out a way to get out of here. Yeah, you know he's doing very well at the you know I need to go home to Penelope. She's my everything. I can't do this thing, you know. But we are having so we've had so much trouble here. Please just help us. Yeah, and. This is a perfect example of like, in in my opinion, something that's a theme through the Odyssey that I've mentioned before, which is that thing of pride and that thing of hubris, is that any time he is throwing his hands up being like, I'm Odysseus, I'm the greatest, he ends up screwed. Mm -hmm. In this moment, yeah. it's one of the, like, one of the few times we see him gen genuinely, more or less, let down all of his pride near grovel. Mm -hmm. Like he says, let us puppets leave. He acknowledges that in the grand yeah. scheme of things, in the games that these gods are playing and things like that, he's just a puppet and exactly. needs the help. And I feel like that's a big moment and an important moment. And the swerve there of her going, oh, crap, this guy isn't like out to get us. He's right. just trapped here. And the first time she sees him is not a threat. Is the first time that he's not being a prideful, cocky warrior. Right. And she seems almost resigned, like, what, and, and maybe, you know, it, it, it's interesting that she also seems re resigned that, you know, huh, Poseidon, eh? Like, yeah. she's done something similar, at least in her experience before. She's not surprised at all. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and yeah, again, I don't know what that, what that has to do with her whole water motif that she's had in some of these animatics. Uh, but yeah, either way, it's, it's one of those things of, yeah, in the second that, she's found out it's Poseidon. She's suddenly willing to help him. So, right. Yeah. Note, by the way. Yeah. Huge note. Poseidon, eh? <laughs> there might be a way to evade him. There might be a way to get home. Though this other way is very dangerous. It might be your one final is dead I can't get you home but I'll get you to the underworld instead I'll release your men and I'll get you to the underworld instead Wait. First of all, I love how the, even in the, even, not just the animatic but even the, in the line the only problem is he's dead yeah, it's a punctuation moment. Mm-hmm. But then, okay, well, now we know where the next one is, the Underworld Saga. Yeah, yeah, because we've been wondering about that. We There's only, like, the thing is, and this is still, I'm still unsure here, okay? Because we've known from the first moment of Cersei that she's the puppeteer. She greeted them with friendship, then she used her magic on them, okay? Now, she's saying she'll get them to the Underworld, but I know Greek mythology had multiple ways one can get to the underworld without being but right she could just as easily be saying yes i'll get you to the underworld drink this and it's poison yeah this could be yeah. as much a manipulation because that's what this whole saga has been about so is this going to end up being a thing of he drinks it thanks her and then you hear an evil cackle or is this going to be her genuinely trying to help him and thus proving that we were right about the fact that she's not an evil character. She's just protecting her nymphs. And once she sees they're not a right. threat, she's not attacking them anymore. Because he even says the, the lineup on the screen right now is, wait, you're helping us? Yeah. Yeah. He's confused by this as much as we are. And it's, again, it's a thing yeah. of that, like, there's, it's just concerning to me that there's two different ways that I'll get you to the underworld can be taken because she was about to send him mm -hmm. to the underworld just a few seconds before when she had that dagger. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. But I'm guessing she means alive, which will probably be a better thing. We hope so, anyway. Wait, you're helping us? There are many ways of persuasion. There are many modes of control. Maybe showing one act of kindness leads to kinder souls down the road.
Okay. Well. That answers my question about the, you know, is, is she yeah. going to poison them? No. She sent them on their merry way. Um, cool. But I love that whole ending bit there. I love that it went from, you know, it was the same chorus that it started off with, the same lines that it started off with of there are many ways of persuasion and control. And it's no longer about her seducing and manipulating him. It's talking right. about how he's changed her mind by like having a genuine conversation and showing her something she'd forgotten, which is that there's mm -hmm. more to people than just their darker intentions. Right. And I was slightly wrong, but apparently that apparently uh, Jay has decided not to go the route of the original um, uh, mythology, because I would said in the original mythology, you would have been very pissed at Odysseus because in the original, he gives in. Right. Okay. And so... they lose years. They lose years at Circe's palace. Wow. Before they have this conversation. Okay. So after years of doing his deed, with his friends trapped. But he as... thinks it's only like a little while. Okay, that was that makes. I was going to say after years of being trapped there, doing the deed nightly with Cersei while his men are trapped as pigs, he suddenly remembers his wife. I'm guessing that they do the deed, right. then he regrets it afterwards and feels bad. Which again, I'm glad that they've kept at least for the like storyline thing because again, we keep referring back to this one, but because it's because it's another historical piece, but or like this one isn't historical; it's mythology. But either way, Hamilton was taken with a lot of free license, you know, a lot right. of the things in that don't take it as a history lesson because a lot of things were changed right. to improve the story. There's no, there's nothing to say that, uh, uh, that Hamilton and Angelica ever had anything between them, you know? Um, right. but in this, it's a very similar thing. Jay's made the decision that he wants to keep the relationship between Odysseus and Penelope pure and have it be a thing of like, no, questioning in the viewer's mind about that which i really like now again we could be totally wrong and he switched it around and we're gonna have something happen later but uh, so far that's what i'm seeing yeah that again that's very true as well but uh yeah that moment at the end there where she was saying something about changing minds and you saw the nymphs being scared and then odysseus gave them like a shy wave and they relaxed that was so beautifully done in this animatic i loved that well and look at the look at the little thing up on the screen now it's like seriously like Dang it. And he's, it's like this he's little begging. Yeah. Crying. Talking about, his, talking about over here. <laughs> it's, I, I love these little exit screens for the animatics because each person that mm -hmm. does them does something really cute in there and it's just brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, um, this was, this whole saga was fire, was so damn good. And mm -hmm. the thing that I love about what Jay is doing with this is when you break this down in parts, if you had said that, you know, an entire section of the saga is going to be, yeah, the part where people go on the island, get turned into pigs, and then he has to, you know, beg Cersei to turn them back and let them go. Doesn't sound like an exciting part of the musical, but these last four songs were freaking brilliant. And it's the same thing exactly. with the same thing with the uh, second song of the original saga, the first saga. And I can't think of what it is in my head now, but the one where they're just traveling on the water. Um, I can't think of the name of the song. Speed but, ahead. Yeah, full speed ahead. Thank you. A song yeah. that's just yeah. about that, oh, yeah, we're done now, we're sailing home, should not have been that right. good of a song. And Jay is just a brilliant writer that he makes all these sections feel so important and so good. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, like you say, it had to be, it had to be, I think, in that case, especially here, to show just how much of an opponent Cersei was. For sure. Yeah. She couldn't just be a shown as a oh she's like a little temptress and a seductress but she's not that big of a deal you know right. Odysseus threatened her and the men will let go you can't just glaze over her in one song you know like yeah. you said in the original they spend years here and it's a big part of their journey so it goes to show mm -hmm. how important she is but again I like that they didn't just show her as a one-dimensional monster that she was yeah. evil Cersei the witch it was that she has her own reasons for doing what she's doing. She is in her own mind justified. And in the yep. end, she's not even a villain. She was just someone trying to protect her people. And now she's helping them. I love that. Well, I enjoyed this one very much. And I, I'm looking forward to finding out what happens um, in the, in the underworld saga, because I've been told over and over again, we've been told, we've been told over and over again, 
hold on to your butts when you get to the Underworld Saga because you're mm-hmm. going to need tissues. You're going to need, you know, anxiety medicine, all of the above. Yeah. And I, I think we've already gone through that all for the rest of this, but, you know. Yeah, but the thing is, he's going to the Underworld. He's lost friends. Mm-hmm. He's had, uh, like, he's had a whole lot of stuff go down. He's just fought an entire war. He's killed God. I, I, I don't know how many people. He's never lost anyone, but I imagine he's killed plenty of people. God knows right. what he is going to run into in the underworld. This is this is like when the yeah. cop goes to prison. You don't want to be in with all the inmates. Like it's nope. uh God knows what he's going to find in the underworld. But either way, I did not expect this song and this saga to go in the direction of them taking a happy journey down to the underworld. I thought that this was yeah. going to be that, you know, the crew's dead, Odysseus is dead, he's clawing his way out of the underworld. But no, uh, right. so yeah, curious to see where this goes. Absolutely, um, and y'all, I'm so glad the the response you guys have given us with doing these reactions has been so wonderful. It's it's been something we've been looking forward to, even just not just the reactions, but how you guys respond and how excited you are to see what we're doing. So. Do us a favor. We're going to, you know, we obviously, we can't help ourselves. We're going to go and start filming the next one at some point, right? But in the meantime, we would love it. Absolutely love it. If you'd go check out um, Gigi, check out their all of their information is there on the screen. We'll put the links in the description below, but all the stuff's there on the screen. Give them some love and support. Give Jay on his page all the love and support because this man's stuff needs to be worldwide mm-hmm. and it needs to be a musical yep. like, on stage. Yep. It needs to be. But also give us a like, comment, and you know, subscribe to our channels as well if you can. If you can, something that would help us tremendously, we both have a Patreon. We do. Uh, DJ has a ton of additional content on his. On mine, you can get two tiers. You can get behind-the-scenes content. You can get early releases of things on the first tier and stuff like that. But on the second tier you can get a guaranteed monthly request of a song that I look at the original and its cover. But if you can't do that for, you know, for whatever reason for both of us, that's okay. Go ahead and if you can, subscribe to our YouTube channels. Hit the like and the notification bell for when we post next because those things help our channels tremendously and they don't cost a thing. All right? So, until the next saga... Have a good day, night, morning, evening, whatever time zone you're in, and we'll see you later.